Hello. Hey, Mary. Hey, Seth. So what what is going on here with like both Derek and Peter doing the right thing? <laughs> Seriously, Derek was more surprising to me. Peter, I feel like, has been for several like storylines has like done the right thing. I don't know. I'm not. I'm not sure. I'm happy with this. I sort of prefer the old days when um, Peter was a um... nozzle. <laughs> <laughs> yes, a nozzle. That's the perfect word. I don't know, because if we're living in a world where Peter's the good guy, then I don't know. It's just, you know, he's like. I think it's because he's been because he's like gone through so much crap. He kind of he's like a little more sympathetic to people going through crap. I don't know. I was, but I was really impressed with the conversation he had with Riley at the end. I was also kind of surprised that Peter's so comfortable saying like "You're gay, you're gay," like because I thought yeah. that it was really touchy and like really not something they were gonna admit out loud yeah i mean i don't like back in the marco days it doesn't seem like something someone would have said to marco yeah that's good that riley has like a tight friend because he needs one man i just the whole thing with riley is like i know when you're growing up when you're in high school it's so hard just to for anybody just to get to that point where they can accept themselves for who they who they are even just like when it's just like a normal thing, like you know what I like math, you know, or something like that. Yeah. And 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 what he's going through is a totally different scale. Dude, from what I hear, it doesn't happen until you're like 50 that <laughs> you finally are like, you know what, this is who I am. Yeah. <laughs> Deal with it. Well, yeah, and like the whole the body image thing, I thought was interesting. Yeah. Or like I see it as a body image thing. Like oh god, it's like, a total body image. Yeah, thing. it's like. Guys and steroids is like girls and eating disorders. Although guys sometimes have eating disorders too. Yeah, I mean, I've always I've said that like I think that guys' body image issues are as bad, if not worse, than girls nowadays. I mean, it's yeah. totally. I mean, I, I hate making myself sound old, but it's totally different from when I was in high school, where it was just like, I mean, guys were wanted to be fit and cool and thing, but it wasn't like a, you didn't try to look buff and you weren't you weren't like shaving our chest and trying to look like we were really cut and muscular that was just not a thing yeah and it totally is now yeah and i'm so glad that i didn't have to worry about that when <laughs> I, was the, I mean i had enough stuff to worry about like i knew i wasn't athletic, like i knew i was but at least i was like i didn't feel that weird about not being really like buff and then yeah. if i had had to worry about that too man jeez. well you know here's what i find interesting when girls have eating disorders, like weight loss eating disorders, they're, like, trying to get, like, super skinny. And when guys, you know, have these body image issues and, and try to, like, make themselves huge, if you take a survey of dudes and, like, what kind of bodies they like a girl to have, not that it's really up to them, but anyway, um, right. like, they'll always pick, like, kind of, like, softer girl. Like, they, they like curves or, like, it, it's not like girls are making themselves bony and thin like to please guys or I don't know if they think they do but th and then when guys make themselves into these like huge muscular like roid guys like mm -hmm. most girls I know are like the kind of guy they're into is, is more of like a lean muscular just kind of like a you know like a strong guy but not like a mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. Mickey Rourke or something whoa 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 <laughs> girls aren't into Mickey Rourke oh, God. <laughs> It totally blows it for me. But no, I but I, I understand entirely what you're saying. It's like, yeah, the guys think they're doing it for girls, but they're really just doing it for other guys or for themselves. And yeah. the girls can be doing the same thing. Yeah, I don't it's messed up. It's messed up. It's just like more about just, you know, be who you want to be and someone out there will like it. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Or just be who you are cuz th that's the thing is that like if you decide there's somebody you want to be and it's not who you are, then you're just like fighting against yourself for ever. There's no way to live. Right. Seth it's no way to live. <laughs> it is no way to live, and I'm laughing at this like it's not a serious issue. But it is. It's... No, it is a serious issue. Another serious issue is what is the deal with this unwritten rule that guys can't date their friends' exes? <laughs> this is, no one told me that. Dude. I'm a guy. I think I'm less. Uh, it hasn't come up in any of the meetings. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> the meetings, the guy meetings. <laughs> no, th it's not even friends. It was teammates. And I get it. I get that it causes drama and that it makes people uncomfortable, but it's like I kind of. I've just always been of the opinion that people need to get over it because otherwise nobody ever gets to date anybody. Like yeah, I, I, admittedly, I was never on a uh, real sports team, so I don't know if that maybe it's a thing and it's a locker room thing, but yeah. I'm, it's news to me is all I'm saying. 
we should uh, we'll ask Argyris because I think he's been on real sports teams. <laughs> yes, Argyris, the man himself, Argyris Karras, who is Riley, who we talked to when Riley had his first big episode. So we figured, why not like follow up with him now that we've seen what's happened with Riley? Yeah. All right, let's call him up and ask okay. him stuff. Hello. Hello, Argyris. Yeah. Hey, what's up? Not much. It's Mary and Seth from the End dot com. Hey. Hey, how you guys been? We're good. How you been? Uh, not bad. Just finished eating. Oh, what'd you what'd you have? Oh uh, well, being a Greek guy, I had a chicken gyros. Oh. Uh, I know it's kind of heavy for lunch, but whatever. Sounds good to me, man. <laughs> I love a good heavy lunch. <laughs> Followed by a nap. Are you gonna go into lunch coma here in the middle of talking to me? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, do they, when they, like, feed you on set, do they have to make sure it's kind of, like, light food because otherwise everybody just falls asleep afterwards or what? <laughs> well, kind of, I guess. They they try to limit on the pasta, and um, they have a good selection, actually. They've they, they've had uh, Greek food in the, in the past. They've had uh, Chinese food. They've had quite a, quite a lot. Yeah, and it's good food. It's not, like, weirdo cafeteria food. <laughs> No, it's it's good stuff. Yeah, not weirdo cafeteria food. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, while we're talking about that, <laughs> we were going to ask you, I hope this isn't weird, but we wanted to talk about, like, your workout routine in real life. Like, with this episode with Riley kind of, you know, going through his maybe body image issues is the way I'm thinking of it. Like, do you, because your character is a jock, and especially because he was going to go through this episode where he's taking steroids, like... What did you have to do to prepare for that? And was it kind of like part of your job to like work out extra hard to prepare for this? Or? You know, I, I was originally kind of fit. I, I don't really have a routine. I was never really into like working out on a daily basis. For the bad medicine episode, I never knew that I was taking steroids to like a week in advance. So I really <laughs> didn't have time to prepare. Like how much can you actually do in a week? So I was just like... I was hitting the, the gyms and, like, trying out my hardest and hopefully getting some sort of definition. But, like, I tried. It was either that or taking real steroids, <laughs> <laughs> right. which were illegal, so I, I didn't do that. Plus, there's all the shrinkage and the boobs and all that other stuff. Oh, yeah, no, <laughs> I, I don't think that would look nice on camera. <laughs> Did they... Like, the scene where you're, like, doing your, like, frustrated push-ups and stuff. I just felt bad for you. I was like, I hope they didn't have to do too many takes of that. Oh, no. You have no idea how many I've done. <gasps> I was oh, actually God. sore by the end of the, like, day. That was the hardest day I've ever had. I had to run through, like, the, like, force and stuff. You remember when yeah. I was meeting up with the soccer stud and stuff? I had to run that day. I had to do push-ups. I had to do those uh, bicep curls. Wait, were those those weren't real weights that you were lifting, right? When oh you yeah. Bicep. You're kidding me. And like, the, and the push-ups, they weren't supposed to be that slow. Like at the start when I was doing them, I was like hitting them real fast, and then I was starting to slow down, and my pace was starting to get slower. And then it's like for consistency's sake, they used the slower ones. <laughs> oh. <laughs> like, I was drenched. I was sweating and like, oh man, it was a there's, crazy day. There's, there's crazy. no good way to fake push-ups either, right? You just gotta do it. <laughs> just like, yeah. No, I know. I know, you just gotta do it. <laughs> they should have like a belt or something and be like lifting you from above. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just hook it on the, my bare back, you know? <laughs> but so... As always, like your episodes are really good because they're really kind of deep and like kind of complex. And um, uh, like I found it interesting that it's kind of like Riley just can't accept himself for who he is. Not only his sexuality, but like he's just got this like deep conflict with who he is as a person, and he's trying to force it to change, and it's just not working. Is he gonna get over that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I know what you're saying. I think I think the, one of the problems is that because he's trying to force it out. It's not going to work. You've got to, like, take it easy and, you know, take it slow. It's it's something huge. It's a big big issue. And it shouldn't be covered in, like, within one episode anyway. Yeah. So, like, I think, you know, throughout a couple more seasons or another season, you'll start to see him come out. See, I was feeling kind of hopeful in, like, the last scene when Peter's kind of like, you know, you can still be, like, mm -hmm. a popular jock and be gay. Like, it's it's not out of the question. And, like... Riley doesn't kind of respond to that, and I was kind of hoping maybe that was going to sink in, but does it, it not quite sink in yet? 
Well, I think uh, he's just had a rough day, right? Everything happened in one day. That's so much that happened that he's he was just sort of mind boggled and like, and he just took it in. And I think it was sweet for Peter like to actually come and like help, yeah. like get his homework and like still be there for him despite the fact that I was or Riley was like pushing him away all this time. Yeah, I think they have a healthy relationship, like friendship going. So I want to I want to I, I go back to the steroids issue for a second because it's like you know I don't know if this is was news in Canada or not but around here it's was big news that Alex Rodriguez you know admitted to using steroids when he was uh, uh, earlier in his career and it's a big question of like what well, did he did he cheat or not so do you think Riley was cheating by uh, by using steroids cheating um, probably yeah. I mean it's not fair to everyone else it's still a drug that changes you. Uh, and it's not fair for other people. Yeah. People work right. just as hard, and then, like, it's thrown to the garbage, like, when someone takes steroids. Right. Oh, oh I just thought of something else. It's the you know, scenes that you had to do over and over. How many times did you have to jump Ray and, and oh, you know, yeah. act like you're beating the hell out of him there? Was that... <laughs> that, was, uh, that was an interesting scene. Well, we couldn't do it too many times because when you saw the blood mm-hmm. on Ray's nose, I mean, that... That we only ended up doing about two times, three, because we didn't want it to get on the football gear and stuff because we didn't have replacements. Oh. It was a difficult one because towards the end of the shooting, it started rain. I don't know if you noticed it. No. Did you guys notice it? I noticed that the jerseys were Yeah. Right. It, was yeah. Getting, it was getting a little soggy out there, and then we had to cut. Uh, but like, it only took us like about three, three shots for like every angle. And Ray, Ray's a champ. He took the tackle. Like, it wasn't a fake tackle. Yeah. You had that to was a real tackle. Right. He plays hockey, so, like, I know he's a little durable, but... That wasn't a stunt salve, huh? <laughs> <laughs> no, it wasn't a stunt guy. Um, this actually... Okay, so speaking of Riley and Sav, there's that line where Sav's like, you know, it's an unwritten rule that, like, you shouldn't date your teammates' exes or something. Uh-huh. And uh, I was kind of like, wait, really? Is that an unwritten rule? <laughs> I didn't know that. Is it? Uh, I guess it just really depends on the person. Yeah. Like, obviously, Riley didn't know much about their relationship. For Riley, Anya was like a really big, serious deal, so he's not just going to stop. But still, I mean, Sav was being way too picky and like way too possessive over someone that he broke up with. I I think that was wrong, and... Yeah, see, I, my feeling is, like, when I saw heard that line, I was like, that's an unwritten rule. I never heard that before. <laughs> and and it, especially, like, in high school, the dating pool is pretty small. Yeah, and, seriously. You know, yeah. if, if suddenly people are off limits, it's like, what are you going to do? I know. <laughs> it's like, I think it's more of a rule towards, like, football players and a certain team. Hmm. Is it, Yeah, because that's what I was thinking. I was like, you know, you can't get too, like... Like, high school's so incestuous, and you can't be like, you can't date somebody who dated somebody in your math class? That's wrong. But, <laughs> like, with the teammates thing, I, I guess I kind of get it just because, like, you, you have to work together. And if there's this, like, kind of raw testosterone-fueled jealousy going on in between you, like, I could see how that could be counterproductive. So, like, mm-hmm. maybe. But still, people just got to be free, man. <laughs> <laughs> free love, man. Free love. <laughs> So, uh, so I mean, is there more Riley coming? Are we gonna get to watch him like fall in love and be happy and live happily ever after? Oh uh, well, I don't know. This season doesn't have such a happy ending for him. Oh. I mean, that's that's what you get to see so far. You know, his his life story is not gonna be developed within one season. That's for sure. Hmm. Um, but throughout the season, you you probably will see him like a couple times because he's suspended now for like another three episodes, right? Mm. Which is Did not they... bad, considering the fact that you'd get expelled for something like that. The chef's just like favoring the football team right now. But yeah, you'll see him come back here and there, making cameos. <laughs> I, I, I would li- I, I'd like to imagine Degrassi being a place where the principal's like, you're suspended for three episodes. <laughs> 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 and like the actor's like walking on and said, hey, no cameos. What did I tell you? <laughs> <You're> Get <laughs> out of here. <laughs> oh, man, that's funny. All right. Well, do you have any good plans for this weekend? Or? This weekend, not so much. But tonight, I'm meeting up with uh, a few Degrassi cast members like oh, Mark yeah? Donato and probably Jamie. And we're we're going to hit up uh, Dog Sees God. Have you heard of that play? Yes. Oh, yes, yeah. Yes, we have. Yeah. And you have friends in that play, right? We do. We have Paula, uh, Jake, 
Adamo, and we have Mike LaBelle. Right. Awesome. So, like, that should be pretty good. It's a really yeah. good play, too. I saw it in New York with a different cast. But oh, We should explain that this is the uh, play running in Toronto, right? It's called Doxy's God, and it's sort of like uh, a reimagining of the Peanuts and yeah, the Charlie it, Brown characters were in high school. It kind of, it's pretty much like, it's about the Charlie Brown characters and, like, Charlie Brown's dog dies from, like, a disease, rabies or something. And then, like, uh, Charlie Brown basically tries to begin uh, to question his existence of, like, an afterlife and stuff. It's... It's a little wacky, I think, but it's got explicit content and whatever, but <laughs> I'm there to, like, support my crew, you know, and check it out, and it's, like, it's a free night, so why not? <laughs> and if that means subjecting yourself to explicit content, then that's what you're going to do, you know? Do you know, maybe you can explain this, and I, this is something we should just call Paul and ask her, but is it just a coincidence, or did, like, did they, everyone get together and say, hey, let's all go audition for this play, or what, do you know what the deal is with that? Why there's I like really that? don't know. I'm pretty sure they all auditioned, and then they all got it mm-hmm. and people probably saw that you know paula and jake already played well in cinderella like i saw it i loved it and they probably said you know let's bring them back for like dog sees god and why not stick a damn on there and michael bell you know Dude, wait, wait jake was in cinderella too oh yeah <laughs> man no one tells us anything <laughs> <laughs> well jake jake was the prince prince charming or whatever and then cinderella was uh paula wow man well, I'm glad we talked to you because you, you're clearing all this stuff up for us. I appreciate it. All right. Well, have an awesome time at the play. Tell everybody we said hi and that they're awesome. I'll talk to you again soon. All right. Uh, it was good talking to you guys. Thank you. Have a good weekend. Bye. Dude, Craig and Jane. <laughs> yeah, Craig and Jane. I mean, sort of. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I, why didn't I mean uh, we didn't? I can't believe we didn't know that. I know. I because we knew that Paula was in Center Lot. I somehow missed that Jake was. Um mm-hmm. and. I'll probably get an end mail like, I told you that. Why didn't you listen to me? Yeah, you're right. I shouldn't do that. I shouldn't make fun of people who <laughs> send me end mails because I love getting end mails. Anyway, Craig and Jane. Crane. 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 I like Jig better. Jig. J-A-I-G. Jig. 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 I get it. I guess we probably shouldn't let, you know, you know, these people are going to have other roles in their lives. <laughs> and we can't be constantly like, Craig is kissing Angelina Jolie. <laughs> Whoa, Jane, it's trapped on that bus. It's got, you know, <laughs> we need to let them live their lives. <laughs> I actually said something to Lauren Collins once we were out for dinner in New York and like, I said, you know, you realize that, like, when you're 60, people are going to come up to you and be like, oh, my God, Paige. And, like, <laughs> they're going to recognize that f- you for that for the rest of your life. And she was kind of, like, stricken. <laughs> like, she was just, like, like, she hadn't oh thought about that before. But, I mean, I'm sure she's going to have lots of other roles and, like, she'll be remembered for other things. But, like, when when it's somebody's, true. like, a part of your adolescence, like, it's a different kind of attachment you have to them. And, uh, uh, you know. But anyway, I love that you, I that you like shined the harsh light of truth at her. And she, like, blew her she, mind didn't, she, brought, yeah, she didn't finish her dinner either. She just kind of pushed <laughs> her plate away and put her silverware down. I need to be excused for a moment. No, she was cool about it. She was just, like, she was kind of, like, psyched about it. She was just, like, I never really thought about that. That's so weird to think about. Anyway. Dude, what's up with you uh, having dinner with Lauren Collins? Where was I? This was, like, a million years ago. I don't know. She was wearing heels and, like, walking around New York. I was very impressed. Anyway. All right. Way to podcast, way Mary. Way to podcast, uh... Way to tell me about dinner with stars that, oh, you had that I didn't sorry. get to go to. I genuinely don't remember what the deal was. <laughs> Talk right. to you next week. Okay. Bye. Bye.